Hello everyone, welcome to the Waterfall Path. My name is Lucia Radetsky, I am a head coach and a Christian. And today sharing with you about our identity in Christ, narcissistic abuse, and how we can understand the ways of the world as a way of narcissistic abuse against us, and how we can recover from that with our Lord Jesus Christ. Before I start with this message, I want to say again for the ones of you that did, didn't listen to my message yesterday, happy birthday for your second birthday after you have been reborn in Christ. For we are all new, a new creation in Christ. Therefore, every time the Lord calls you to be saved, He's making a new creation and He will end the work that He started in you. So, today... I want to especially talk about the struggle of recovering from narcissistic abuse, but also to bring awareness as of all of society to be, in a way, victims of narcissistic abuse. You know, survivors often struggle with invisible scars, scars that are not easily seen, scars that are related with psychological, emotional, financial wounds that not everybody can see in your body, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. So it's very important to understand how a narcissistic dynamic works so we are able to spot it and we are able to initiate a process of separation from that and a process of recovery from abuse. And now I'm not just talking about victims of narcissistic abuse uh, with people, but also with systemic dynamics that we can find in the world. So one of the most common manifestations, manifestations of uh, trauma from narcissistic abuse had to do with PTSD, CPTSD, which is complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, depersonalization, derealization, we have imposter syndrome also, hopelessness, we have trust issues, we have um, many mental health issues also that can come from prolonged gaslighting. So here's the thing, um, the ruler of this world we know is the devil. When the ruler of this world is trying to combine you to live in the world. What you're not understanding is that you're entering into a covenant with a narcissist. For the devil is a narcissist. So this world is basically operating from a place of a narcissistic personality disorder in the way how he creates your identity based on what the devil wants you to believe you are, what it serves the devil plans. Now, in Christ, that's not who we are. And ultimately, that's not what God created us to be. And we're going to analyze a little bit more of this. Because when Jesus told us, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have overcome the world, what he's teaching us is that we're not doomed to always believe the lies of the devil. We're not completely bound to him at all. And that's because when we receive our Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, he is the one who comes to set the captives free. And that means that he's going to set us free from that narcissistic, abusive relationship with the world. Now, here's the thing. Jesus Christ is inviting us to a journey of healing, for he's the healer of the brokenhearted. And this journey is for everyone, not just for those of you that had parents or, or, or bosses or any figure of authority who has been abusive towards you, but also to everyone that has been living in the world. For the world has a way to operate that it's very similar to how the narcissist operates. So here's the thing. When, when the world tries to copy you, it's similar like what the narcissist will do. The world will go, um, love bomb you, like flatter you, talk, talk a lot of great things about you, trying to inflate your ego, and then it's going to try to steal from you all the substance, all the soul, all the talent, all the inspiration 
and it's going to be appropriating that. The devil has been doing that forever. And it has been doing that in terms of also even against Jesus Christ itself and his word and the word of God and how the devil can use it for its own advantage. So kind of imitating but in a dark way what Jesus Christ can do but taking all the credit and then dismissing and bullying the Lord Jesus Christ who is the one who has done it. So the devil is always going to work for its own benefit. He's always going to try to make you believe that you are getting a benefit out of it, but you're not. And ultimately, what the devil wants is for you to worship him. And that's, um, that's the ultimate finality of it. And when I'm saying the devil, remember, I'm not talking about a guy with hopes. Come on, guys. Like, that, that's, that's absolutely not what it is. We're talking about the darkness that is in people. We're talking about principalities. It's not a guy with horns. Don't make it lame. <laughs> let's, let's be serious about this. We're talking about ways of thinking, strongholds that had to do with narcissism in our society. And that is not how we are supposed to be. That's not how we're supposed to be. So we have a way out of it. And that way out of it is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the way, the life, and the truth. He's the one who is going to take us out of it. So here's the thing. All that hard work, all of that talent that you have, when you accept the covenants with the devil, when you enter in the world because you want fame, because you want opportunities, because you want whatever it is that the devil has promised you, you're not understanding that you're actually giving all that away. And that instead of glory, the devil is going to just use you and then it's going to pretty much exchange your destiny. Take what you had of value to make it his and then to um, completely stripe you out of your true identity of who you are and to exchange it for the identity of the narcissist, which is very common. It's what the narcissists usually do, if you think about it. So here's the modus operandi he's gonna make you believe that it's your idea he's gonna make you believe that he's helping you and at the end of the day what the devil is really doing is just to steal kill and destroy which is what he does so when you step away from the world you are going to experience a little bit of that craving just like when you are living a narcissist you're gonna feel that almost like an addiction right to go back to that relationship that you know it's bad for you but you're so used to it to it so it's so important that you rely in the lord jesus christ that you're not alone and that you understand that it's not by your own strength that you're gonna leave the world that you're over, gonna overcome because you're not gonna leave it but you're gonna overcome the world you're gonna learn to walk in the spirit and to be stronger than the lies of the devil when you accept that the lord jesus christ is the shepherd is the one who's gonna teach you how to do that and that you're gonna do it in his strength and not in yours so whenever you try to let the world to start being more humble to start walking in a different way to start working with the lord the devil is gonna try to love bomb you because that's what a narcissist will do so the world is gonna try to hook you back in it's gonna try to offer you something Remember, even the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil, but the Lord Jesus Christ was very clear and he set boundaries and clearly stated what was not allowed for him. So he's a great example for people who are victims of narcissistic abuse, and honestly the whole society is, in that, that we get to have needs, that we get to set boundaries, always with respect, always in love, nothing on violence, always with that clear path which is in our lord jesus christ a path that is really into his righteousness and not our own so here's the thing when when you're able to seek christ you're going to be able to build a solid identity in christ which is who you really are that identity in christ is going to be and it has to be to be really complete and and truthful to yourself it has to be really trying to respect the the Ten Commandments, the commandments that Moses brought us, because those are laws that are made to create harmony and peace in our society. So 
they're not just because and and it's very important that we remember them that we meditate on them and it's very important that at all times we we truly understand that those boundaries anyone that we love as a way of truly caring for one another. So here's the thing. With the devil, you always give more than what you get. You're always going to give more. So the price is going to be high for whatever it is that the devil is offering you. Sooner or later, the price is going to show up. So um, sickness, for example, is, is the price. Or even death which is the wages of sin. So be aware that that's ultimately what the devil is going to pay you with. But when it's about Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for us so we can have eternal life and salvation. So he's always the one who gives more. And we, in our side, we are the narcissists against Christ when we are not understanding his sacrifice and we are mocking him or we are dismissing what he has done for us. That's why it's so important to examine ourselves and to be grateful to Him and to create this identity in Christ that is based on truly love and on really wanting to be better human beings. So, here's the thing. Those who intentionally and repeatedly break the boundaries of God and, and you know, this can be knowingly or unknowingly what you're doing when you're breaking the, the commandments and especially if you're doing this intentionally and repeatedly you are pretty much abusing God's grace and you're abusing His love and you're taking an unfair advantage of His goodness and disregarding His justice and disregarding the gift of life that He has gave you so it's truly not a nice way to be. And so when people say that they are a good person and that they are righteous, but they dismiss God, they dismiss the boundaries of God, then they're deceiving themselves because who can be really a good person or who can be really righteous, but at the same time be abusive with God itself by rejecting him in such way of not listening to his boundaries. Boundaries that ultimately are made for us to be free, are made for us to be at peace with one another, to bear fruit, because that's what God wants for us, that we bear much fruit, that we have joy, that we have peace, that we have patience, that we have self-control, that we have love over all things, my friends. So that's what God wants, and that's why He gave us those boundaries, because it's a healthy relationship with Him. And this relationship with Christ, it's a, a relationship that is based on interdependence and not codependence. With the devil and with the world, the relationship that we have, it's a relationship based on codependency. It's a relationship that is going to bring you to a place where you are nothing without the devil. When you are completely submitted to someone that really doesn't care about you and it's using you. But with Christ, the relationship is different because Christ's interest is really for you to experience the fruit of the Spirit, to reflect His glory. He truly wants the best for you. He has plans to prosper you and not to harm you, which is the opposite of what the devil's plans are. So here's the thing. When Christ teaches us to not be self-seeking and to die to ourselves, what Christ really is trying to tell us, let me find what, what he was teaching me. So, is that you, you are to overcome the push of your self, selfish desires, the push of living in sin, because that's a way of honoring, not just God, but also honoring everyone around you. That depends on that attitude that you may have towards service for other people. So if you are constantly letting your sinful nature, your flesh, to crave and to lead you, then sooner or later you're going to find the wages of sin. And that's why, you know, 
when Christ is calling us to die to ourselves, he's actually calling us about the nine or narcissistic nature that is based on the flesh, that is based on the world, of being in the world. He's asking us to die to ourselves so we can walk in the spirit. And so when we walk with him in the spirit, we become a new creation in Christ. And that new creation in Christ is much healthier. But it's not denying that we are all different. It's not uniform. It's not trying to say, okay, now everybody is uniform. No. And why I'm saying this? Because God has gave us plenty of different gifts and callings. So there is a place for you to be, to be what He has called you to be and to reflect His glory. And it doesn't mean that we all have to do exactly the same because we all have different gifts in Christ. So I hope you understand how your relationship with Christ, it's really truly what a healthy relationship looks like. When you accept Him in your life and you put Him first, what you're doing really is to put the health of society first and to put also the health of your own relationships first. So here's the thing. Let's, let's examine, for example, the family, which is one of the units that God has created to reflect His glory, His love for His children. When you have a husband or a wife, you tend to be more self-sacrificial. You care about your partner, so you do adjustments, you do changes to make sure that everybody is happy. Without neglecting your own needs, you find ways to take care of one another. And that's beautiful. That's what God sent us to do. And when you have children, that's even bigger because now you have to take care of the whole family. And so your own um, desires or, or things become secondary to the fact that you need to serve, right? That is what God wants for us. He wants us to be good parents of society, examples of society, of how we can do better so our children, and I'm not just saying our, our born children from our own wombs, but also the children of humanity can be better examples. So our humanity can be a better one, one that is based on peace. And that is the kingdom of heaven that we are bringing as the chosen ones. Now, here's the thing. Ultimately, the self-sacrificing attitude will actually help us feel good and experience the fruit of the Spirit, will bring harmony and healing, not just for you, but also for everyone around you. So this is an attitude that is not, it doesn't have to do with neglecting yourself. So let's understand that because Jesus Christ who is a royal model of what God expects us to understand and to be, Jesus Christ was not neglecting himself. He knew when to take naps. He knew what kind of food he needed to take. He even with the anointing of Bethany showed us that it's okay to take care of yourself. When he said, you know, the poor you have always, but me you don't have always. He was at that moment understanding that he needed that comfort, that emotional comfort that Mary Magdalene brought to Jesus Christ. He took it and he rebuked his disciples for not understanding that self-care is also important and that receiving that reciprocity, asking sometimes or allowing someone else to love you, it's also part of walking in Christ. It is not neglection of yourself, what Christ is calling you to do when he's saying that you have to die to yourself. He's not saying that. He's saying that you have to die. So, friends, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that there are there are there's this importance that we have to see in promoting other people's achievements and gifts and really helping the body of Christ to be edified without contentiousness, without jealousy. And if we find any of those traits in us, it's so important that we ask our oh Lord Jesus Christ to help us heal. Yesterday, we were talking with some friends and they have been married for 16 years and they were sharing how um, the man has done a great job on working on how to be more, how to trust more his wife and how to really let go of jealousy and how Jesus Christ helped him to do that. And I found that a great testimony because many people are today 
they believe the lie of the devil that because they have been wounded there's no hope and that hopelessness it's not your person in christ there's always hope no matter how much trauma you have endured you still have the hope to grow and to really learn how to trust more not just others but also yourself because if you walk in christ you know that christ lives in you so you don't have to distrust yourself or doubt anything because you are in christ that means that you are protected by god and that god is going to tell you if someone is a bad influence or someone is going to hurt you god is going to protect you from that and at the same time he's going to protect others until you are completely healed isn't that beautiful so trust him and trust his timings for he is recovering you and when i'm saying you i'm talking about the whole society especially the chosen ones but also the whole society um, in terms of the ones who pick Christ because the ones who deny Christ and want to pick the world we know what is the wage we know the wage is not going to be recovery because those of you who know the world is going to kick you out at some point the world is going to spit you the world is going to vomit you and you still remain in that relationship you guys you know better you know better you know that fame is not gonna last. Everything that the devil is offering you, it's not gonna last. It's not going to last. Sooner or later, you're gonna see what was the price for that. But what Jesus has to give you, what you have to guard your heart in Jesus Christ, is eternal. It's eternal glory. It's not glory for now. It's not glory for the world. It's not that glory of fancy stuff and like, uh, you know whatever it is that the devil has combined you with looks whatever all of that fades it fades none of that really bears fruit but the fruit of the spirit that you can bear when you walk in christ when you let the lord guard your heart and help you that it's eternal that it's eternal that nobody can take it away from you and that freedom you cannot pay it with no money you think money is going to buy you freedom? I'm going to tell you the truth. Money is not going to buy you freedom. Money is going to get you more trouble. And I'm not saying with this, if you're blessed with money, something's wrong. No, if you're blessed with money, that's great. You can bless many people with it. But don't think money, it's going to resolve any situation. Neither another person, nothing that the world can offer you. The only thing that is going to resolve your issues, it's going to be... Christ for he already knows what you need God knows what you need even before you even pray about it he knows it now here's the thing in Christ we can learn how to recover from narcissistic abuse the narcissistic abuse we have received in the world all of this time for God in Christ teaches us that we can be assured in God we know who we are we know our identity we know our authority we know our power remember our lord jesus christ gave us authority and power against all principalities and rulers of darkness of this world we're not just powerless lame creatures like the devil is trying to portray us christians or to portray jesus christ itself that's because the devil is jealous of the power of Jesus Christ, just like any other narcissist. They're going to try to talk evil about the ones who had the actual power because the devil is only a tiny lame angel. And if you think, a fallen angel, by the way, and if you think about it, God has many legions of angels, each one of them stronger than the devil itself. Hmm? So here's the thing, my friends. In Christ, he is going to allow you to seek love and fellowship. Well, while the devil, what he wants is to take you to, to, that, to that hill where he can isolate you and tempt you to live in sin. He doesn't want you to love. The devil doesn't want to give you love. That's a lie. The devil wants you alone because alone you're easily controlled. Alone you're easily manipulated, just like a narcissist would do. So the devil is going to isolate you and let you alone. And in Christ you have fellowship and you love one another. And you have freedom. For you have to control yourself. You don't need the devil to control you. Now here's the thing. 
when I say Christ, I'm talking about a person that also obeys the commandments. Otherwise, you're not in Christ. You need the government to control or you need policemen to control. You need the law because you're not in Christ. Because you're not naturally walking in the spirit. So here's the thing. In Christ, you grow in humility instead of growing in pain, growing in, in a wounded, self-seeking attitude. You grow in a serving, humble attitude that it's content with what it has. You don't need more because you have it all in Christ. So in Christ, you also are bold and confident. You can heal your wounds. You can heal everything that the devil has told you, that you're not enough, that you will never amount to nothing, that you're not loved, that you're not worthy, blah, 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 blah. In Christ, you are bold. In Christ, you are confident, more than a conqueror. In Christ, you are loved. In Christ, you are worthy as movies. You see? So it's a relationship that it's going to build you up and not pluck you out. It will pluck you out if you need to be chastised because you have been following the devil because the Lord doesn't want you to die. The Lord doesn't want your wages to be sickness. You see? So in Christ, you're also going to learn to be righteous because his righteousness is going to cover you even when you make mistakes. Guess what? The narcissists are always going to point your mistakes. It's always going to be saying, oh, you did that wrong. You did that wrong. You are a failure. That's a narcissist that is going to say that to you. But God says the opposite. God says, even when you fall, even when you are a sinner, even when you think you are a failure, I love you so much that I send my only son to die for you, to cover you, to make you righteous. Can you believe the level of love and humility of our Savior to do that for us? Do you see? The opposite of a narcissistic relationship. A narcissistic relationship will never, will never bring you a second covenant to heal you. But God is not a narcissist. God is full of empathy and loves you so much that even when you make mistakes, he says, all you have to do is repent and change your ways and I will forgive you. Because God also knows to set boundaries and also knows that it's important to attend to everybody's needs because he's teaching us to have a reciprocated, beautiful relationship with one another and with him. So, the other thing is, that in Christ, we're going to be sanctified daily. So that means that he's going to be constantly helping us be built up, helping us grow, helping us heal, helping us be set free and do all of that for other people, not just for ourselves, but for others. In Christ, we will be inspired by God. We will have unique gifts when we walk in him. We develop our true identity in Christ and we are able to use amazing gifts, more powerful than anything the devil can teach you or do. Gifts that can truly change the life of a person. Inspiration and words that stay in the life of people and change it forever. You see, in Christ, you're going to be loved. You're going to be cared for. You're going to be protected. You're going to be here, heard. You're going to be seen. And you are going to be belonging to his own very body. So if you are today trying to recover from narcissistic abuse, or if you haven't even realized that you actually have lived in a place or a situation that had been abusing you emotionally, mentally, physically, financially or even spiritually um, and even physically for some of you then I pray today that you will give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ that you will welcome him in your life and that you will start reading his word and listening to what are the boundaries God has created for us I pray that you will realize that you are in a narcissistic relationship with the world that the devil is using you and that it's time for you to break free from that. And it's time to you to understand that you are born to be free.
that you are born to reflect the grace and the glory of God and that the devil will never give you that. I pray that today something can change in your heart, that that heart of stone that you had towards God can become a heart of flesh when you understand the very heart of God, how much he loves you and he wants you to not be a narcissist yourself against God or against others. I pray that this message finds you and that we can celebrate together, maybe in some months, maybe in some years, the new creation that you are in Christ, a whole new creature that reflects his glory. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Bye. Holy Christ Mass.